And Steffi brought you in because of Keita Rush being out, and you accept it. Yes, I did. And this is fantastic. Steffi, how come you picked Callie Ray to revenge what was done to Keita Rush? Not only they're trying to get Keita Rush, they're getting Callie Ray as well. She's new to our company, and I'm not going to let that happen to any girl that joins WOW. I'm done with people like her taking advantage of us. And you know what? As long as you're next to me, I will protect you as far as I can go. There you have it, man. Steffi Slay is not going to take any bullying. And Callie Ray has joined her. All in purpose of Keita Rush and the Bully Busters. Stay tuned. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is another edition of the Rights and Wrongs Pro Wrestling Podcast with your host, Mr. Green, and another review for WOW Women of Wrestling. Of course, if you are just stopping in on me doing episode 29 and didn't hear the other uh, preceding reviews, I'll, I'll do a little bit of recap. But for those of you that are or not aware, you can watch everything that I'm talking about on the CW app. You can listen, to, listen. you can watch it, excuse me, on Pluto TV also. Um, they, they do have it. You have to go up to the uh, on-demand section and then kind of peruse through it through that. But it is there, it's available for you, and you can check out all these episodes. Now, keep in mind, if you have not or you're not aware of where this came from, all of this stuff was shot a long time ago. I wanted to say, what are we, I guess, two, two and a half years at this point. So none of this stuff is up to date. So you have to keep that in mind. Nothing that we are watching here is up to date. Um, it's not really time sensitive material, but it's also, you know, it's, it's going to show with certain people, uh, specifically Faith the Lioness, because we all know that she's Nikita Lions now and she's moved on. Uh, as as well as several other people throughout the show, but that's neither here nor there. Um, before we go into the crux of the the, the review, uh, there's uh, one or two things I want to mention. One, uh, for those of you out there that like to have your uh, wrestling in the palm of your hands and you want to book a match, so to speak, uh, then I'm going to suggest you Custom Vixens. Custom Vixens is being run by a friend of the podcast and, and friend of the Women's Pro Wrestling Network is uh, Rock and Roll Roxy. She is handling that, and you can get matches up and down the card, whichever you like. I mean, you can do pro. You can go to the other side of the spectrum and do uh, fetish. Not particularly my cup of tea, but is is there for you, and it is uh, easy to, to get a hold of. All you got to do is go to customvixens.com. That's customvixens.com. Uh, there will be one uh, match that is put out uh, by us for free on the YouTube channel. So if you are looking to sample what it is that's offered to you, uh, I would say go there, take a look at it, and uh, if you like what you see, and if you want to try booking your own, then uh, contact her. That is uh, available for you again. I would say customvixens.com, C-U-S-T-O-M-V-I-X-E-N-S.com. And also, I, I guess getting towards... Um, the more wrestling news, the latest on the WWE Women's Tag Team Championships. Now, as we know, the Tag Team Championships were vacated 
<laughs> essentially against WWE's will when uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi found that they really didn't have anything creatively for them and they just left the belts on the, on the desk. Like, hey, you know, because the, the story or the angles that they were getting booked in had really little, I'm not even going to say little, it had nothing to do with the tag team championships or them getting new challengers or angle that's built for their titles or anything like that. Uh, creatively, they took offense to it and they walked. Uh, I know there were some people out there that was like, ah, oh, they shouldn't have did it. They should have stayed and this, that, and the other. Well, you might change your mind after hearing this because what I'm getting off of this latest report, and this comes from uh, Diva Dirt, and actually it's been reported in a couple of places, is that uh, since they left, it was stated on air that we're going to have a new tournament to crown new champions. And that was about a week after that took place when they went on this whole Sasha Banks and Naomi let us down. I mean, they ain't let me down. I didn't care that they walked out of the building. Look, I, I'm actually good for people that stand up for what they, you know, they believe in. And if they thought that that company was not giving them the respect that they needed and they were willing to do it. Now, that's, that's the other side of that coin. As long as you are willing to do it, I am fine with anybody walking off any job. You just need to be willing to take the consequences of what happened. And they clearly were. Neither one of them going to be, you know, starving out there. I mean, come on. Naomi's been with that company a couple of years now. So has Sasha Banks. And I'm sure that they have both made a good chunk of money to where if they leave, they're not working check to check. They're not going to just sit and be like, oh, man, I ain't got no cash. I can't pay the mortgage, you know. So I think they'll be fine, you know, in terms of that. But yeah, look, if you if you've got that on your side uh, and, and you are willing to to do nothing rather than do something stupid or something that doesn't work for you, then yeah, I I, I stand with you with that. And that's with any job. It ain't got to be you know WWE. It, it could be life. You could be working at the grocery store. If they tell you that to do something that ain't part of your uh, your job description, and you willing to walk out of there and and accept not having a check for a while, do it. <laughs> you got at some point you got to draw a line in the sand, and then go for you know, let people know you ain't gonna get walked over. And you know, if you're willing to deal with the consequences, deal with the consequences. Anyway, that's that's a whole different thing. The point being, the reason I even brought that up was that. There are no plans for the WWE Tag Team Championships. They had they talked about it on there. They said that oh yeah we you know we're gonna crown new champions. That's been some weeks now, and there have been no plans that have been announced. And in fact, Fightful, which I think broke the news originally, is quoted as saying talent that had we've spoken to said that they've received no word when or if. The tag team title tournament will actually happen. Even beyond that, they claim that they've heard no discussions regarding the tag team titles whatsoever since that announcement. So there you go. Not surprising whatsoever. I mean, the men tag team division is, you know, hanging by a thread. So you know the women, once they're... Uh, shiny new toy losses sparkle or the the uh the press that they were constantly getting for breaking new ground like oh yeah we got the women's money in the bank and we got the women's royal rumble and we treat them just like we do all our rest of our superstars and we got the the, the raw women's championship and then smackdown women's championship now we got the the tag team championships and the nst got this own women's tag team championship. you know once they ran through that which is pretty much what they did. They ran through all of those things just because it was the hot thing for them to do at the time. And like I said, the men's tag team division can barely get attention, much less the women. So I'm not going to say that they will not do anything with the tag team championships at some point, but that certainly does not come off as a high priority, especially not a high priority now, considering everything that's going on in the WWE. So, no. They uh, they walked out, the belt's been on the desk, and they haven't been seen or spoken of since then. 
Uh, the easy transition off into our review is the discussion about, well, I don't want to say discussion, but it was reported that Lita reportedly turned down working with the Wild Promotion. Uh, this also comes from Fightful. It is not a big surprise that AEW would have reached out to Lita. That is is not shocking whatsoever because, you know, Lita's a name. And AEW has done a lot to reach out for whom they feel might be on the market and, you know, draw them some extra eyeballs or what have you. Uh, it was reported that they had a potential storyline with uh, Dr. Britt Baker uh, for Lita to face. But she opted to pass on that and, you know, go back to WWE. And she's, you know, showed up in a, a handful of appearances since then. Even challenging for the Raw Women's Championship at uh, uh, Elimination Chamber against Becky Lynch. Uh, but it was also reported that that was not the only company that reached out to her. Now, before I read this, because this comes from Fightful Select, th there's a part of this that, <laughs> that I... I actually find a little surprising. And I'm going to say right now that I do not know what they are talking about in this, and you'll know what I'm talking about when I get there. So this is per Fightful Select. Fightful has learned that while Women of Wrestling at least made an overture to leader prior to her public announcement, uh, excuse me, their public announcement that they'd be returning to TV. We were told that things didn't get very far at all as Lita made it clear that she had no interest in working with WOW Women of Wrestling and specifically David McClain. One WOW source indicated that Lita made her feelings about McClain very obvious and quickly rejected the overture. WOW would quickly pivot from their original plan, which was to contact a lot of women wrestlers with global television exposure. Since then, they've relied on building their brand around Tessa Blanchard, who was later ousted. Now, that is the uh, that was per Fightful, and I'm sure that that whole statement about uh, her feelings about David McClain, that is new to me. This is probably the first time that I've ever heard anyone outside of a fan say negative things about David McClain. I can't speak on it one way or the other. I have not met the man, haven't talked to the man outside of email correspondence. We, we, we did it changed exchange a couple of emails a few years back but other than that i mean I, I have not heard anybody mention anything anything pertaining to him and most of the ladies that were there who might have had any sort of uh uh contact communication what have you with him usually tend not to want to say anything about wow most of them don't like saying anything about wow negatively anyway I, and it Especially the ones that are outside of the wrestling business. And, and by that, I mean the girls that work for WOW specifically and nothing else. Um, he has a lot of power as it relates to them. Because if they don't work for him, they're probably not going to work in some cases. Uh, so this is all new to me. I, For the sake of WOW, I will say this. For the sake of that company, I hope that uh, word is will. I hope that uh, the rumors that certain fans and I don't put a lot of you know uh, uh, credence or you know faith in, in loose stuff that came from fans years ago that's posted online without any evidence or proof. Uh, but I would hope that those things are not true and do not bubble up. Because if there's one thing that has happened, you know, that over the years, we've learned that the, the pendulum always swings the other way. Eventually. It might take two years, it might take ten. But the pendulum eventually swings the other way. And the last thing that they need walking into any sort of television deal is anything like that to start popping up. If there are negative things or, you know, issues that have taken place behind the scenes anywhere, you don't want that now. So, I, and I'll leave it at that. Um, 
Episode 29 of Wow Women of Wrestling. And this is all preceding with the uh, the new version of Wow that's going to be popping up in the fall on various CW uh, stations across the country. So look for your, your local time slots and see if you have it anywhere. Uh, I've only seen it advertised out in California. I think KCAL, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the episode starts off with a recap of the six women brawl and then it goes into the reforming of team blondage uh, and then they do a recap on this haircut angle that when team blondage reformed they took Faith the Linus and they cut her hair after they do this recap they go to a vignette which shows Faith in the aftermath of her crying because they betrayed her and cut her hair and uh, show her sitting down in front of the mirror and cutting it herself. And the commentators are going like, oh, she's taking her power, you know, basically. They're taking her power back and she taking this negative and making it a positive and blah, 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 blah. I am going to just start off right now and say this is stupid. This angle was not good at all, and I'm uh, you know, and I've tried not to you know be harsh to Wow in this, these reviews, but this one, this one was just bad. It was just, it was just bad. Not not the turn, mind you, not the reformative team blondage, mind you. Everything leading up to that stupid haircut angle. Why? Okay, and, and let me paint the picture for that. For those that hadn't watched it. And and just go and check it out if you get the time. So you have this turn from Amber O'Neill and Team Blondage just performed, uh, reformed, excuse me. They hold down Faith the Linus in the middle of the ring. Nobody is coming out to save her, but we'll, we'll skip past that. And they decide to cut her hair. Now they cut. This woman's hair, keep in mind, Faith's hair is about down to the middle of her back. They don't cut off a huge chunk off the side of her head. They don't cut off a chunk off the top. They don't, they don't shave it down to the root. They cut off the longest piece of her hair down her back as they could possibly do to where you wouldn't even notice that her hair was cut at all. You can't even see it. Like, what's the point of that? What is the point of having an angle where you're going to cut someone's hair and it is not even noticeable? It is a waste of time and a waste of air time. If you're going to do an angle for something like that, go through at the angle. Go through it. I mean, I can't say it's a stipulation because it wasn't like she walked into the match saying, if I lose, you cut my hair. But if you're going to do something along those lines, just just do it. And if you can't agree to that, because I know, you know, some of them not going to want their hair, their head shaved, then don't make the angle. Because if she was just looking to cut her hair, then just go cut your hair. It's not like it was some sort of significant difference in her look. It was just shorter. They just cut it down, you know, when she went to the salon. Because believe me, what they did on TV was nothing that a salon couldn't fix. It was just cut down to just a little bit past her shoulders. Uh, that's it. Nothing was was served from her getting her hair cut in this thing. And I want to make it clear that I, I'm not going to single Wow out in that because Wow isn't the only place that done it. You know, so I, I don't want to just point the finger at them. Lots of wrestling promotions make angles, stipulations, or what have you that they have no intentions of going through with. And if you're not going to do that, then don't. It, it has grown into a pet peeve of mine. It's like when WWE would do these I quit matches, but no one ever gives up. Somebody on the outside throws in a towel or something like that. Or they do a last man standing match, but then they'll just bury them underneath stuff to where they can't actually physically get up so therefore he couldn't stand it's stupid it's ridiculous and this is the same thing if you're going to cut somebody's head then go ahead and cut it if not then just leave it alone 
Because there's nothing, there's no heat off of that. There's nothing that I can feel sorry for this woman for. I mean, I know she's trying to act and cry and this, that, and the other. Like, oh, they they took advantage of me and this, that, and the other. But, like I said, there's nothing that a salon couldn't fix. And, yeah, I could see the, the upset of the persona of Faith because she was turned on. That would have should have been enough. But if they were trying to get the extra mileage out of it and say, okay, well, we're going to do something else, then... I don't know, tarred feather or something. Dump dump some slop on her head. Something that you can do that she can agree to and it can look good on TV and move on. But the haircut thing is just bad, especially when you know they don't want to cut their hair. And look, I'll, I'll point out a, a match on my channel, WPN. I... The, it, I didn't like the angle to begin with. Let me just go ahead and say that now. I didn't like the angle to begin with, that they had a championship versus, versus haircut match, but I did not book the match, okay? So let me just start with that. I didn't book it. My job was to shoot it and to commentate, and I did that. At the end of that match, Crystal Rose lost, and – she did not get her hair cut. She decided to cut it herself, but she cut it much like what we saw on TV. She cut the back. She cut the long ends. She did some stuff like that in front of the fans so she could say, all right, yeah, I lost, and I was supposed to cut my hair, but I'm going to cut my hair for myself. If you can't do the angle or you can't follow through the angle, don't do the angle. And I love both of them. That's episode 79 for anybody that's looking to see it. WPN episode 79, Crystal Rose versus Brooklyn Creed. I love them both. They're both good wrestlers, but they should not have had that stipulation. They shouldn't have. And WOW is no different. They should not have had that angle. It wasn't going anywhere. It didn't look any different. It didn't make any difference overall. It was just filling TV time with an angle that meant nothing. Anyway, okay, I just had to get it off my chest. So we move, <laughs> we move on and go to uh, the first segment. Jesse Jones cutting a promo with the Dixie Darlings, which essentially is there to leverage uh, herself or leverage them, I guess their unit now, into a championship tag team match. Because if you weren't aware, the Dixie Darlings stole the tag team titles from the reigning champions, that being fire and the drilling. Or for those of you that's out there in the indie circuit, Kara Hogan, uh, well, if you watch AEW, because she's on there, uh, Kara Hogan and Diamante. So they do this, and Jesse Jones negotiates with David McClain, who says, look, I'm doing the right thing. I will give you these titles back because, you know, hey, we found them because she, you know, she didn't admit to stealing. But uh, you know, we deserve something for our good deed, and, and this isn't verbatim, but basically she's saying, "Hey, you know, you know, we should get a, a title match." David says, "All right, well, look, I'll think about this. If you give me the belts now, I'll put you in the number one contenders match, and y'all can, uh, you know, you might get a, a title shot provided that you win." So they get it, they give the championships up. And now they are being positioned as facing off for the number one contenders. Now, here's one of the things that I dislike about how WOW is produced. Because I know WOW produces for the live audience and then they produce for the TV audience. But what winds up happening when you're looking at it on TV is that you're seeing them repeat information because they shoot it backstage and then they essentially get out in the ring and say the exact same thing. So you got a backstage segment with her saying it, and then you got her up in the ring saying it. Like, hey, we got this belt. We should go do this. And then go out and re-say it for the crowd in, in the audience. Do one or the other. I mean, it's not necessary because, look, I, I know you got to do it for the audience. They have to see it. They have to hear it. They got to understand what it is that's going on in front of them. But they don't need to have it twice. And if you're going to have them do a backstage segment, at least position or write it or make the verbiage so that it's not a duplicate of what was said 
five minutes ago. So anyway, the next segment is the actual tag team match with the Dixie Darlings versus Sassy Massey and Chantilla Chella, which I still don't like that name. Uh, uh, how Sassy Massey and Chantilla Chella are the number one contenders or even ranked for, for the number one contendership is beyond me. I don't remember them having any string of wins or anything like that. I don't even remember it being said that they were on the march to getting a tag team title shot, but here they are, and all of a sudden they're like the – if they're not the number one contenders, they're close to being number one contenders, and it just it didn't make any sense to me. It's like, where is this coming from? But anyway, we're going to ignore that because in the universe of WoW, they apparently are, are, are top contenders and they're, they're going for the belts or at least looking to be uh, uh, contenders for it. The commentators, acting like they have no clue of how, the, how uh, the darlings got the belts when they saw all of this stuff take place in the monitor and they were t- t- telling them, oh, those, that's a great prank. Up until they turned heel, David McClain was perfectly behind them with the prank stuff. And that that's began become one of the issues of his commentary. Is that it, I get that he's the, the commentator that, that goes for the baby faces and whatnot, but you you can't have your commentator flip-flop like that. You know, I mean, there should be some level of credibility to the commentators. He should have called them out. I mean, he didn't necessarily have to bury the dollars, but he should have called them out for us. Like, hey, look, I understand. Fun is fun, but they shouldn't be doing that. You know, something like that. I've said from the beginning, it's like the Dixie Darlings are heels. Everything they did was heelish, even when they were being presented on TV as babyface. Like, they're stealing stuff. <laughs> I mean, and they're stealing this stuff from the heels at the time, Amber O'Neill and Jesse Jones, and I know that was supposed to have been like, ha-ha, that's – they getting over on the bad guys, but the bad guys didn't do anything to them for that to be warranted. They just did it. They just stole their shoes just for the sake of stealing them, which you know didn't serve any purpose for them other than turn around and get them beat up. And they should have gotten beaten up for it. I've said that a couple of times in the podcast too. So anyway, we know where this was going because the darlings are part of it and matter of fact now that i say that before i go any further they should just go ahead and drop the dixie off their name no you know most people that are trying to move past that they should i know they're trying to relate them as being from the south but you know, knock it off anyhow so they give up the belts to come to be to go for a number one contendership and in this case we got jesse jones rustling with one half of the darlings i do not know which Jolene or Jolene doesn't matter because they did what exactly what you knew was going to happen. The second you saw this, it pretty much screamed angle alert because one of them was on the outside playing the role of the manager. Jesse's in there. She did, the, I guess, the bulk of the work. And the second you got one of the Dixie Dollars in there, she took a beating, rolled out to the floor, tussled, tumbled around with her sister, and then the other one switched and went back in there. DDT, pin, one, two, three, they win. That's it. Well, let me, let me, uh, I, I missed one, one part. DDT, arm bar, tap out, win. So, with little to no work on her arm, Chella taps out. A partner wasn't there to save her, and now you got new number one contenders. Like I said, it, this was a quick match. You knew it was coming. It, it spelled itself out the second Jesse Jones inserted herself into the match. We knew what was happening. No surprise there. Segment three, Dave McClain delivers the tag team belts back to fire and adrenaline. So now they have their championships back. Segment four, Callie Ray versus Malaya Hosaka with Exile. So you got uh, Exodus and Genesis on the outside. They interfere, of course. Uh that's their purpose. I don't mind this with them so much because Malaya is the veteran of the of the three, and she probably needs to be in there more often than than the two of them, because they're green and they they aren't 
a polished act yet. And I don't know if they're ever going to get to be a polished act with the limited amount of wrestling that they do and the limited amount of wrestling that WoW offers unless they are going to take their act on the road. And I've advocated for that several times, but I know that it's never going to happen because they don't want to do it. So anyway, uh, Callie gets proactive as she drops kicks and attacks Exile on the outside and turns the tide. Up until... Malaya goes down. She distracts the referee. Exile comes into the ring. They give her the nail in the coffin, which is basically a forward double suplex uh, to Cali. Uh, once that's done, they get out. Malaya comes over. She wins. End of story. Nothing really right home about there. Uh, I am a little bit surprised that they have another three-woman team of similar description because now that you have the darlings with jesse jones is somewhat similar to what you have with exodus and oh excuse me, exile and malaya hosaka it's the two rookies that are tagged off with the veteran and the veteran is there basically to work a lot of the match as much as they can i, I guess to give them some kind of experience or, or be able to carry the match some kind of way. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's just me. I mean, tell me what you think. It just seems like a very similar act. Uh, maybe you should go at one or the other, but uh, we'll see. I mean, there's only room for one at the top, and I think that it, it, in this case it probably should be Exile because they've been there longer, but Exile doesn't really seem to have a a a – point of destination to be quite honest they just they just there and participating uh moving on segment five it is a recap for the second time of the six women war of the psycho sisters versus siren holiday and princess Oz. i know that this as i'm watching this it seems like this is becoming their big angle that they're trying to promote like oh this is you know the great and this, this is a war that we can't can't control and all that good stuff uh, I, this is a bit long for me I'm not going to say that it's long overall but it's a bit long for me it, it is it feels like this is going on longer than it needs to that's the first thing it also feels I, I don't want to say spotty what's the it feels like this there's something missing that, that that's that's probably the best way I can. it feels like something's missing here I have to start with the whole princess Ozzy thing so we, you recap the fact that Princess Ozzy, remember, she was kidnapped. She was kidnapped and brainwashed, allegedly, to be part of this group. Since that time, whatever friends she's had, they've completely abandoned her and just moved on. Now, I understand that in wrestling, people turn and, you know, then they move on. You know, that's it. But the way that they set this up on their television, on the Wilds TV, is that this woman was, she didn't turn of her own volition. She was kidnapped and mentally manipulated into doing this. Now, that's not the first time this happened in wrestling. We've seen it happen with, you know, the cult thing with a couple other people. We've seen it happen with, uh, let's say, Cactus Jack and Raven when he joined his flock. Uh, you probably seen it in WCW a couple of times, but at least at that point, they have a blow off match for the person that's trying to save them. Now, whether they can do it or not depends on the match because they may just, I've seen it where they've just like, look, I can't save you, but I'm, this is where we at. We, you know, if it's coming down to this and you're going to stay with him, then I'm going to make you regret turning on me, you know, and then we, then they blow off the angle. Princess Ozzy had none of that. It just, kind of came and went she was captured she might have had a match uh, uh with uh well Giselle Shaw I, I, I could never pronounce her name right 
Raina Reyes is who she is on, on their TV. But uh, she had a match with her, and then that was kind of it. Was, it was like an immediate blow off, and they just moved on. Wasn't explained, didn't, didn't get on TV and say, hey, look, I'm sorry that I, that I lost her. I should have been a better friend, but this is, this is where we are. She's going her way, I'm going my None of that. Just, and it feels like that should have been at least addressed somewhere. Rather, because she doesn't even look like she fits in that group. She's just a misfit within a pair of misfits. Now that I say it out loud, maybe she does fit. <laughs> so anyway, they are, they are recapping this because this, this is the, the big angle. And they are going for uh, setting this up as this all-encompassing feud between these two uncontrollable forces. And what are we going to do? I mean, I thought they would have had a blow-off by now anyway. This has been going on for weeks. Wow at least should have stepped in and said, hey, look, we're going to stick this in a steel cage or something. But nope, just just let them kind of carry on. They also show uh, the leader of the pack, so to speak, Razor, getting beaten up and put out. Or I, sh- I shouldn't say beaten up. She got flame in her face. From from when the psycho sisters decided to attack, we'll call them evil, incorporated, and they uh, turned the tables on them in that attack, and they and they got her in the face. So it, again, when they do things like this on TV, it's hard to feel for the baby faces here because I'm sure the psycho sisters are being positioned as the baby faces in this group, but it's hard to feel for them when a leading up to this they. We're badasses and we do this and do that. I mean, they were essentially de facto heels. Now they're de facto baby faces. And the only thing that makes it even remotely so that they should have attacked them is that they they didn't get over on the bat on the evil incorporated. Again, I'll I'll just use that. They didn't get over on them in the last encounter. So now we gotta attack them while they while they're shooting the vignette. And they got the ties turned on them. They got torched in the face, or at least the razor got torched in the face. Very, very hard for me to feel sorry for. Her. Aside from the fact that she got blow torched in, <laughs> in, in the face. I mean, that shouldn't happen to anybody, <laughs> real or otherwise. But, uh, yeah. In this segment is, I mean, not this segment, this feud just seems like it's just going on and on and on and on and on. So anyway, that that sets up for a one on one is Siren versus Fury. Uh, in the next segment, Fury pulls out and rips up uh, Siren's tarot cards. I remember Siren the Voodoo doll. She's the one that allegedly put the, the spell over um, uh, uh, the Princess Ozzy to begin with. So that was the big thing that was supposed to, you know, set her off. And of course, that did set t- Siren off because you don't, you don't mess around my, with my tarot cards. Three <clears throat> um, one by disqualification when uh, the ref got pulled out, and the, the 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 action came back into the ring. But lo and behold. A psycho sister from Wild's past pops up with Spike, Hudson Envy. She returns to save the psycho sisters when she runs in with a baseball bat because Mesmera was useless in this position. It was just one of her on the outside with with uh, uh, Holiday and Princess Ozzy facing her. And even up to this point, up to this point, I have still not seen anything significant out of Mesmera. And I try to put the disclaimer out there. It's like, I, you know, I don't dislike her. I don't know her. I'm sure she's a wonderful young lady and probably sweet as apple pie. But I just, as far as her on TV, I don't get it. She hasn't done anything. And the only time she ever shows up is in these multi-cluster matches. She's not had a single singles match yet, and probably for good reason. So, I, so I mean, other than that, she's a personality. I don't know why she's there. And 
now it's back to we we had to call somebody else to call Spike. She comes out there, and I want to say, you know, Hudson Envy looks great when she came here. I don't know if she's going to be part of the new Wow, but even her look it didn't really fit what the Psycho Sisters had. She was in like bright colors. She was in bright yellow and bright red. Not a bad look, but she looks very super baby faces. You know, so I'm I'm not sure where that's going. Other than that, they you know they they had to even out the odds again, so they called somebody else up. And that that is the that's the story. So where we go here? There's this next segment. Segment seven, Team Blondage history package. The one thing you cannot discount or take away from them is that the, the production of the video packages are very good. Considering that Team Blondage has no history in WoW. So WoW doesn't have any footage of them themselves that they can use. Team Blondage had to be, or they had to utilize footage from independent promotions that they've been to, some photographs that they took, and things like that. And it worked. And it gave a complete history of, of uh, Team Blondage to split, how Amber O'Neill came to WoW, uh, Chrissy Vane, or at least the narrative here is Chrissy Vane went to WWE, even though she wasn't there all that long. Most people probably wouldn't even remember. If you blinked, you missed her. That's how she, how long she was in, in WWE. It, it wasn't long at all. Um, but they did go into the history of the All-American Girls, how, she, how Amber O'Neill went from that to working with uh, Lana Starr, and from Lana Starr to Jesse Jones, and then back to Team Blondish, and you know, it was a nice collection of information, very concisely done, put the well, put together well. My only problem here is that this was set up to lead into the next match. And my question here is how did Team Blindish become number one contenders to the tag team titles? They just got put together a week ago. How are they getting a title shot immediately? It, it just it, it didn't make any sense, especially when in the same show you had somebody who had to go through a number one contenders match to even rank for it. Yeah, it's things like that that, you know, get me more than anything with, with Wow's uh, continuity, we'll call it. So we go to the main event. It is Wow. Tag Team Championship match, and it is Team Blondage versus Fire and Adrenaline. I will not go through the play-by-play -play here. I mean, uh, both of these individuals in the team are very well-schooled. Amber O'Neill, Chrissy Vane, uh, Fire, Adrenaline, Kara Hogan, or Diamante. Everybody here I have the utmost faith in as far as in-ring work. Lana Starr did, is doing well on the outside, and I think that that is a good position for her as the unit of Team Blondage, adding her in as a third Blondage member and, and uh, manager or leader, whatever you want to call it. I think it all works. But this is where WoW goes back to doing what WoW does, and I'll address that in a second. The champions are in control until Lana Star hooks Adrenaline's leg. And, uh, you know, she does the manager thing and gets the, gets the team back in charge. After a couple of flub-ups by Team Blondage earlier, now they're, you know, in control. Um, That, you know, the hooking of the leg opened it up for Amber to catch Adrenaline with a super kick. Super kick and Blondage is... is you know, running things at that point. We will move forward to the point where Fire gets the hot tag and she turns the match around. The end of the story is that Team Blondage loses. Blondage got booked into a corner here. And this is what I meant when I say that WoW did what WoW does. I don't know where this logic came from. I don't know how they came up with it. But with almost... No fail. When they debut somebody, 
they lose. I've watched this thing from all the unaired episodes up until now, and almost every person that debuts is the first time on TV they walk out there and they lose. Regardless of how good a match that they may have had, they lose. And Team Blondes was no different. This is their first time back together in 20-plus years. They made this big deal about them, Team Blondage, back together. They, they, you know, they got video packages. They had, like, two different recaps in this. They were a big deal last week when they, oh, my gosh, Team Blondage back together, you know, all of this stuff. And then they walk out into an immediate title match where they can't win it. Like, how did, how did you set this, these, this team up to, you know, get into a championship match their first time out? That's what I meant when I said they booked themselves into a corner. Why are they getting a championship match to begin with? They shouldn't have it. They should not be having a championship match. They should have had a match with somebody that they can beat. And they could have beat immediately without anybody blinking an eye. I mean, you don't have the bully busters anymore, so you can't throw them under the bus. But, I mean, it, it, in a lot of... In my universe, if I had to do something with the pieces that were in front of me, I'd have switched the positions of Jesse Jones and the Dixie Darlings and Team Blondage. You let Team Blondage take on somebody that they can beat, Sassy Massey and Chantilla Chella, just to get them into the win column so they can start their run toward the tag team titles and it makes some sort of sense. You have Jesse Jones and the Dixie Darlings face off against Fire and Drilling. That's where the, the feud is. And then you have them either lose or win in such a way that it would not discount them from having another match down the line. DQ or Jesse Jones six the Dixie Darlings on them or I don't, you know, something. Or she entices the, the darlings that they probably would have been better for it, have them entice fire and adrenaline into such a point that they beat them up and they get themselves disqualified. The darlings remain the more contenders because they didn't lose, but they didn't pin the champions either. Something along those lines. And I just, I'm just saying this off the top of my head. I didn't give this any thought. I'm just saying this, you know, spur the moment. But the end result would be the same. It's like they wouldn't have lost anything. Team Blondish lost something here. They went in as a top act, or at least while was positioning them as a top act, and then went right out there and lost to the tag team champions. So what's the point? I mean, there's no reason for them to go back. They, they lost. They lost clean. They didn't even have a dispute. What I just said about the Dixie Dollars, okay, have them lose but by DQ or something like that or count out, whatever. The, the team blinders didn't even get the, the benefit of having a dispute on their side. They just lost flat out. So where do you go from there? It's back to the same statement. They, you've been booked into a corner. The only thing that Team Blinders would really justifiably be able to go out there is the tag team championships, and they just lost that. How do you justify them coming back? Now, I'm sure there's only two more episodes that uh, that exist. Excuse me, not two, three. There are only three more episodes that exist within the unaired episodes of WoW. So I'm pretty sure that they're not going to just turn around and get another championship match inside the three episodes, and I would be very surprised if they do, but I'm not banking on it. But where do you go from there? What, what do you do when you have this team that we've been positioning as, oh, yeah, it's Team Blondish. They've been around and for a long time, and, you know, they were a force on the independence. I was like, it doesn't come off like they were a force. They went into it. They were being tossed around and bumbling around and bumping each other and everything else. And then when they finally got some, you know, I mean, that's what heels do, so I'm not going to discount that. Blondage went in there to help to make the champions look good, and that's fine. But they should have gotten something. They should have had some wins, given it down before they got to this point. 
I don't know where you go from it. I mean, I honestly, I'm going to be interested in seeing the uh, the remainder of these shows so I can see what exactly they're going to do with some of these people. If I'm rating this episode overall, and I know I said this about the last one, episode 28. I said episode 28 wasn't bad, but it was, you know, it was just kind of missable. There was nothing, there was no big thing that took place there. There was nothing that I would say, oh, yeah, you got to watch this. This one is just shy of that. Like, I can't really say that it's uh, missable because they do have something in there of significance. They have the reformation of Team Blindage, but the carpet that Team Blindage is standing on, figuratively speaking, uh, to me, just got yanked out from underneath them. It didn't seem like it was doing anything. The return of Spike probably would be a bigger deal if she were there. If the episodes that she were a part of were something that people saw and remembered. Those episodes took place so long ago. I think they shot those in 2014. And then they didn't air until like 2016. This is why I constantly say these hiatuses are killing wow they're killing it because every time that they do it you forget it's not like you have some consistent stream of information with wow and the only people that keep up with it like that are the are wow's hardcores they go into facebook and then when they do wow doesn't answer them so you so there's no information being fed and when I say that, why that why doesn't answer them? Why does not answer them? They they just leave that open. It didn't matter what they ask them. Hey guys, when do y'all come back on TV? They just leave it sitting. How so and so? What are they doing? Is this person going to be there now? And I get it. You can't answer everybody. You cannot answer everybody, and you shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, if you got somebody that's being paid to do it, that's on your staff, then yeah, that's different. But you can't answer everybody because you get flooded with that. But pertinent questions like, hey, when are you guys coming back? What's this going on? Is this person still signed to you? I mean, I can see those things. And, may, and maybe you don't want to keep repeating the answer. But in most cases, they didn't even repeat it. They didn't even bother with it to begin with. This is one of those episodes that just kind of, you know, I don't want to say got under my skin. But there was things that in here that bothered me. Like that haircut thing, which, which was a complete waste I like Jesse Jones taking on the mentor role for the Darlings. This is probably the only way that I will like the Darlings because they need to have something on their side, and Jesse Jones is it. Again, it feels like it's the same act as Exile, but I will reserve that until it goes further. But it feels the same way. One mentor with a tag team, Yes, it's great to have a lot of teams in there, but, you know, they're running out of babyface teams. You got Exile. You got, you know, the the Darlings. You you, you have – who's the other one? I can't even think oh, – well, well, the Monsters of Madness. I'm not even sure if they're coming back. But, they, you know, they got a, a, a fair amount of heel teams, and I know there's some other ones that I'm not thinking of, but the, the babyface side is kind of decimated. They needed to get – some other people in there, or, or form some other teams. I'm not gonna say pull in some other people, just to kind of level this off. I mean, even the disciplinarian and and Samantha Smart probably could operate as a team, or the disciplinarian and uh, uh, Abigail Maverick. Even though they broke their their partnership, they could. I'm sure they could throw them back together. If they really wanted to. The point being is that there's. They don't have anybody that's positioned to be able to do the the heavy lifting for a team like a team blinders. So I shouldn't say heavy lifting. Take the bumps or take the loss or whatever the case may be. They they need that, and they don't have it. Because if they did, team, that's who team blinders should have been in the ring with. And if they were going to just get this sudden, out of the blue, inexplicable title shot, you would think that they would at least had Lana Starr or Sofia Lopez or both of them working out something to where they leapfrogged everybody to get some sort of championship match. 
It didn't make any sense. It doesn't, you know, it didn't make any sense on the show. It doesn't make any sense now. They just, you know, they just have it. So <sighs> there's good in here and there's bad in here. I mean, even the the entire uh, uh, feud of the six woman war that's that's going on with the Psycho Sisters and Siren and Holiday and Princess Ozzy. I am assuming that they are going to drag this out into the final unaired episode. And hopefully when they do that, it is a blow off and they can be done with this thing because I thought that the last time that they had the six of them in the ring that it was going to be a blow off. Apparently that didn't happen. So, and if I had my choice, here again, you know, here's another rewriting. If I had my choice, it would have been Mesmer that they put out. Instead of Razor, they should have put her out and then brought Spike in, and then you have Razor Fury and Spike. You probably would have gotten a far better match off of that rather than leaving Mesmer in, who clearly is not ready to be in the position that she's at. That's one of those things that WoW used to do years ago, and they are continuing the 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 tradition of taking people who are super green and just sticking them on TV after six months or nine months of wrestling school and then all right well you're ready to go so here you go she ain't ready and they know that she's not ready so maybe they'll think about that the next go around all this stuff is taped can't do anything about it now so anyway, that was it. That was WoW uh, episode 29. Join me again when I go back and I go up do episode 30. Uh, what would I say? Should you? Yeah, I mean, look, you can watch it. But if you're looking for those little points of logic that I was talking about, you, you probably will feel like I will. Like, what was that for? Why do they do this? And when they start making me feel like that, I feel, you know, that makes me get to the point of, you know what, it's probably something that's missing. If they if they are leaning me towards that, then something ain't right. <sighs> so there we go. <laughs> One more down and three more to go. And that will be WoW's full unaired season review. Join me again. You know, for the next one up, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I would love to read whatever comments that you have. If you feel differently, if you feel like, hey, man, that was a great episode of WoW. I don't see what, you, what the problem is. And let me know. I mean, you know, like I said, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I, I might be, you know, viewing this the wrong way. So if you have something that is uh, of an opposing view, uh, please uh, get at me. Let me know. You know, just just uh, let's have some some dialogue about that. You can uh, support this channel by making purchases of the T-shirts that are listed below. That takes you to uh, Teespring, and I'm working on new uh, models and uh, designs to go in there. So as I find me you know, some more artists, I need some varying styles other than my own. But you can support it there. But the easiest way to support it is by liking the videos uh, that you have here and subscribing and hitting that bell. Subscribing and hitting the bell always helps because it helps boost up the algorithm. If you're listening to this, rather than watching it on YouTube, if you're listening to it via podcast, then please subscribe to the platform Subscribe to this channel on the platform that you're listening to it on. That, too, also helps. If you're looking to find wherever we are, go to WPNWrestling.com. That's WPNWrestling.com. It is the nexus for everything. We got our 24-hour live stream that's there every day of the week. If you just want to you know, leave it on, sit down and watch some some women's wrestling as we have produced it, it is there for you. And also every podcast gets filtered out onto that. So this one will be there too in, in audio format. Good stuff. So you check those things out. Be sure to, like I said, subscribe, 
Uh, hit the bell so you get the notifications on what we're doing. If you want to do support, you can go to the website, hit the donate button. You can buy a shirt. All of those things are perfectly valid, and we appreciate every way that you have. Some have shared it. Some have uh, gotten back to me. Some have hit uh, the the uh, subscription. Uh, all of that stuff, I appreciate all of it. Um, the one other thing that I am looking to do, and I will go ahead and say this now, is that since I have been deeply engulfed in WOW over the last couple of months uh, producing these things, I will probably be giving a top 10 list of, for suggestions for their programming coming up. Now, it's not going to be in a particular order, but it's, these are things that I feel like they should do as a company uh, to... Just change it up a little bit. They've done a lot of the same things for a lot of years, and I think it's about time to make a few changes here and there at least. So keep your eyes and ears out for that. And maybe we'll go back and uh, do a recap of their one and only pay-per-view, WoW Unleashed. How about that? And I got some other matches that I got to post up. Like I said, one from Custom Vixens that's coming up and. uh a match that was shot at Deep South Wrestling. Of course, um, I'm going to make the last suggestion. Speaking of Deep South Wrestling, you can go on to our channel, look at episode 87, The Wold versus The Natural Born Killer. Whew, what am I saying? The Natural Born Legend, Crystal Rose. That is a good match, and it was for the Shine Nova Championship. Let me tell you, I never thought I would see the day that I would be able to get the call a Shine Championship match. But I got a chance to do it. Got a chance to do it with the second longest Shine Nova champion in the history of that promotion. And I was able to see a, a really good match in the process of that. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, please go ahead and check that out. You know, I'm really kind of surprised that the Wode hasn't popped up in a while now that I think about it. Because at least... Half of the people that's in the the Psycho Sisters, she she knows. Well, I should, she knows one of the Psycho Sisters. Half of the people that's uh, two thirds of the people that's in Evil Inc. She does know. So hmm, I wonder, maybe, she, maybe, maybe you know, she might pop up there in the fall. Who knows? They they picked up so many new faces off of the Indies that uh, ain't no telling who might go up there. The only one that I know for certain that's gonna be there is Killer Kate. And we know she ain't going to call herself Killer Kate. Anyway, I'm rambling. So <laughs> that's it, folks. I appreciate you tuning in and listening to this podcast and taking the suggestions. Again, leave whatever comments that you may have. Join me again when I come back for episode 30. Um, and whatever support that you may lean into the WPN, the Women's Pro Wrestling Network, I thank you for and appreciate so that said, this is Mr. Green saying that this is Mr. Green saying so long, and we will see you on the next go-round. Take care, everybody.